Now, WGEM Sports with Garrett Tiaz. Mark Twain Tigers have been patiently waiting for their first game of 2020 after their week one contest against South Callaway was canceled due to the Tigers being in quarantine from a player testing positive for COVID-19. But the Tigers were cleared for competition this morning and they didn't waste any time getting after it as they hosted Clompton Ellsbury this evening. The Tigers came fired up from the start for this one on their home turf as they faced the Indian Hawks. In the first quarter, Clompton on offense, Indian Hawks try to run a sweep. The ball gets loose on the toss and sophomore, sophomore Coleman Epperson would recover for Mark Twain Clompton, in the Clompton Ellsbury territory. That turnover would lead to a five yard touchdown scramble by Mark Twain QB Peyton Hawkins for a six. Tigers lead eight zip after the two point conversion and Tiger Nation is absolutely loving the effort out there in game one. Later in the first, after a controversial Indian Hawk TD reception on the ensuing kickoff, watch Mark Twain's Evan Torrance track down the ball at the 16-yard line. Number 28 would break through the defense and turn on the Jets. Nothing but green in front of him. A 84-yard return for the score to give the Tigers a 14-6 lead in a shootout tonight in Center, Missouri. Your final after four. Mark Twain, 34. Clompton Ellsbury, 51. Due to the stadium lighting issues at Missouri Military Academy, the Highland MMA game was moved to Saturday at noon, and the extra day of practice proved well for the Cougars as they would beat the Missouri Military Academy by the score of 50-34. to Running back Robert Gale rushed for 227 yards. He had three touchdowns and scored on an 85-yard kickoff return. On the Iowa Prep football side, Central Lee remains winless on the season after losing to the Warriors of Van Buren 40-21 last night in Kiyosaka. The Hawks got off to a good start with a 7-0 lead, getting good contributions from senior Jaden Becker and Dylan Stuker, but they, but they held a 15 to 14 lead with about four minutes to go in the first half, but the Warriors would score a touchdown with about a minute left in the half and they never looked back. Offensive coordinator Tyler Bryant filled for in for head coach Chuck Banks, who was not in attendance at last night's game. He spoke about some of the things the team will need to do to get back on track. Mental side, we kind of, we got to get a little bit more focused. We got to get ready to just continuously and consecutively making good plays and not worrying about the deep plays every now and then hoping to score. We got we got to continue to keep scoring when we have the ball and we got to stop them on defense, which we kind of struggle with. Softball season in Missouri is picking up after last week's opening weekend tournaments, followed by the regular season starting up this past week. The girls on the softball diamond have been competing hard and they didn't disappoint, disappoint this afternoon out in the Monroe City softball tournament. In the first semifinal game, it was Monroe City and Hannibal as fans lined up around the outfield wall. Third inning and no score, but Taylor Sims would change that with a runner on second. She hits one the other way. The runner on second would come in to score, just barely beating the throw home. Hannibal up 1-0, and they would continue in the third inning. Kyle, Kylie McAffrey pulls one down the third baseline for a single. The runner from third would score, and McAffrey puts the Lady Pirates up 2-0 in the third inning. Hannibal would add another one and make it 3-0. However, in the fifth, it's now 3-1 in Monroe City looking to make a comeback. One out runner on first as Emily Friedank hits one to second. Hannibal tries to turn two, but Friedank beats it out, and the runner from second would come home and score, and Monroe City makes it 3-2. In the bottom of the seventh, Monroe City, they would try to make it interesting with two outs, getting back-to-back -back single. Here's the second one, but after a visit to the mound, Hannibal would get the last out, and they would move on to the championship, beating host Monroe City 3-2. To the other semifinal game, it was on the baseball field as some fans took advantage of that extra room. Canton took on La Plata, and they had it going early as Abigail Jarvis rips a single up the middle here, and she, the runner would score, and they give Canton a 4-1 lead early. And Canton would just continue to have a day on offense. Next inning, runner on third for Emily Gorrell, and she hits a soft one, but perfect place, and the third baseman can't handle it, and Gorrell is safe, and Canton extends their lead. And top five now. Naraya Clay with the, with, at the plate with no runners on, and she gets a hold of this one. She hits it the other way over the right fielder's head, and she would turn on the Jets as she hustles around the diamond and gets a stand-up triple. Tegan Burbridge would hit her in right after with an infield hit, and Canton would roll into the championship as well, beating LaPlata 12-2 in six innings. And finally, here it is, the championship game featuring Hannibal and Canton. Top of one, runner on third for Abigail Jarvis, and she smokes one up the middle. The second baseman made a diving stop, but Jarvis would beat it out, and Canton would get on the board first, 1-0. Bottom of first still, and Adra Nicholson hits one over the second baseman into the outfield, and runner from second would score, and Nicholson ties it up at one in the first inning. But don't worry, the Pirates were not done there. Taylor Sims will come up to the plate now, and she rips one up the middle as well. And the runner from second would come home and score, and Sims would give the Pirates the lead, making it 2-1, after the first inning, and it looked to be a high-scoring game early, 
But later in the game, top six, can't now what, five to two. Bases loaded for Teague and Burbridge, and there it goes. Burbridge gets all of it, and it's a grand slam, and Canton goes up nine to two, and that grand slam would prove to be the difference maker as Hannibal in the bottom of the seventh would put four up, but it wouldn't be enough as Canton would go on to beat and win the Monroe City Tournament by the score of nine to six. On the professional side of things, in game one of a doubleheader out at Old Wrigley Field, the Birds would win game one by the score of four to two. Adam Wainwright picked up his fourth win of the season. He's now four and oh. And in game two, the Cardinals would keep the bats rolling as they beat the Cubs 5-1 to one as DeJong and O'Neill both homered in the second inning. And for a final look at weather, Whitney.